Welcome back and welcome to our media panel, Bill Ralston, Lister columnist and broadcaster Susan Wood. Welcome to you both. You both had uh, quite a bit of history with our first topic, which is close up. <laughs> Susan Wood, you're a former host. Uh, goodness me, I guess first I will ask you, what do you think? Is it the format at seven o'clock that's wrong or... Or was it potentially the host in Mark Sainsbury? I think TikTok. Time had gone past. It had got blanded out by TVNZ, the programme. It had come to the point, you'd flick the news on. You would, I would, I'd stopped watching it quite a long time ago. I, I think it's time had passed. I think it needed to be refreshed. Um, in so saying, Mark is the loveliest man, but he's not the toughest interviewer, and I think it did miss that a bit, because part of the thing of a tough interview, it's like a joust, it's like a sport, it's entertaining to watch, and I think it did miss that a bit, but I would certainly not lay the blame at Mark's feet. I think the programme needed a refresh. Well, yeah, it's an interesting point. In the 23 years that format has been in position, it's gone off the boil from time to time, even when Paul Holmes was fronting it. And it's a matter of, with formats like that, you can change the host, you can change the executive producers, you can um, change, change the reporters on it. It's about getting them right mix, the incisive interviews, the gets, go out and get the gets, the newsmakers, you know. Kim.com. Who got Kim.com? John. John Campbell. Mm. All the big gets of recent times, the things you think, I cannot yep. miss that. John Campbell's had them. That's been the problem. They just haven't been doing the business. But, well, yeah, but what I'm saying is it, it, it's possible you can actually reheat a program like that and get it going again. I don't think the answer is, as TVNZ appears to be doing, to swapping to some infotainment type of chat show. Um, mm. I think that's just... Um, but, but the ratings suggest, don't they, that something has to change because both... Channels what? at seven o'clock are struggling a little. Well, 489,000 people, I think, on Thursday night watched, mm. uh, watched Close Up. The problem is, it's the wrong audience as far as TV and Z's concerned. It's too old, it doesn't have enough household shoppers. It's it not have, Auckland. It's not young, you know. Mm. And so they're going to try it for a younger format and they're searching for an audience I don't think will actually be there to capture. I think if, uh, if you're looking for a younger, hipper, cooler, groovy, groovy audience, they're probably watching, if they are watching television at all, um, they're watching Shortland Street. See, I go further. I'd actually look at the whole hour and a half. Mm. I am so sick of seeing reporters saying, I'm standing outside a building that was burning <laughs> two hours ago yeah. and actually there's nothing behind me. Look at the whole <laughs> hour and a half. It is too long, I think, in this day and age. When that format was invented, Holmes back in 1989, and then it went to the, to the Hour News sometime after that, the internet wasn't around. Sorry. We didn't have cell phones. We weren't mm. online all day looking at information. But, but that's the challenge, isn't it? Because the Brits have gone to half an hour, but we can't. Apparently, I've spoken to some advertising uh, execs, and they say you can't do it. You can't bring it down to half an hour because you need the advertising dollar, and that has to be spread over that 90 minutes. You oh, would know more about that than me. But absolutely. I mean, um, when I was there several years ago, the, the, the budget for running news and current affairs was 50 million a year, uh, but it brought in more than $175 million in revenue. Now, I presume both of those figures have gone down because they've cut the budgets and the revenue has probably fallen with it. But it is, uh, when you compare what it would cost to strip other programs by create, you know, programs. Back to close up. Content is the most important thing Content if you've got key. the mix Absolutely. right. And it doesn't matter so much about what the format's like. If you've got the gets, you're going to get the viewers. But you see, you know, on the day of the home show, that survived and there was only one show. It was when, of course, when Paul Holmes went that they put Campbell into the role. Is the country big enough? Do we have enough current no, affairs to didn't. support two shows? And, of course, I was doing close-up when that happened. Paul yep. went off to Prime and Campbell started here. There was nev uh, never room enough in the market for three. And, of course, the Prime show went went pretty quickly on and the other two have sort of b battled it out for the years afterwards. No, there, there isn't room. There aren't enough stories. The long-term winner here, I think, is John Campbell, who will Absolutely. pick up some audience from one, the, the traditional close-up style of watcher, um, who um, will be drawn over. Okay, there'll only be a couple of points, but he's a winner. The loser is the public, who's going to lose a bit of choice. Because I don't think um, um, close-up was that bad, you had to kill it. I think it probably needed a good kick up the bum um, and a reinvigoration. I think it's perhaps, a, uh, you know, the loser too, potentially, is another current affair show goes by mm. the by. We've seen Sunday cut back to half an hour. We've got mm. Campbell Live, and mm. really, we don't really have anything else that does, a, you know, other than, say, Q&A and also The mind, Nation. Mind you, you could hardly say Close Up was the bastion of, you know, high current affairs. Friday night, they led on the launch of the iPhone 5. <laughs> well, that, that's sort of almost close to advertorial, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's probably why it's going, you know, um, in, in that sense that it's just basically... <laughs> Going through the motions. It's yeah. been going through the motions yeah. for quite a while. Right, so let's talk about who's going to host it. We're all pretty sure that um, Pippa Wetzel has been groomed mm. for this position. She is, they say, the next mother of the nation. She's very, very popular. 
Do they put anyone next to her? And if so, who do you think? Inevitably, they'll go for a second head. It'll be a male, um, and it'll be um, you know that chatty format you used to have on breakfast um, between her Lincoln. and Paul Henry. That's right. <laughs> I mean, obviously, Paul Henry, I think, would be a, a big contender for the kind of infotainment show they're now talking at running at seven. What scares me is what if the infotainment show doesn't attract the viewers? If it starts actually pulling worse ratings, uh, I think they'll just axe the whole idea of any form of current affairs, as they call it. I mean, Pippa and Paul are an extraordinary team. I they think are. they're one of the best teams on television. And I think if they can get them back together again, they would certainly have some appeal. Uh, to, people would certainly be turning on to see what they were doing. They're both very bright people too. I, I, I haven't seen enough of Pippa's interviewing to know, but Paul's a very strong interviewer, so you could bring that element back. I mean, he can he can whack the Prime Minister around the ears with the best yeah, of them. Yeah, he can. So you could, you know, you could do something quite interesting using those two. If you can't get Paul Henry, Bill, what do you do? Oh, well, I mean, there are other males, I'm sure, in television New Zealand, from Greg Boyd right the way through, that they could put in there. But I think they, for the kind of entertainment show they're looking for, and then they you use the word... You saying entertainment. Are you yeah. confident that it's going to be entertainment, there's going to be no current affairs element to Oh, it? no, though, there will be some. There will be some, as there is on, on say, the They um, say breakfast it's the story show. of the yeah. day. So if the story of the day is Kim.com, then I guess yeah. they'll be doing something around that. Will they be touching on GCSB? Who could say? Will they also... Well, you know, is it going to be modelled on something like uh, the One Show in, uh, on BBC One, which is pretty popular in the UK, whereby they would have mm. a celebrity, so someone like, you know, Justin Bieber, but they almost yep. also would have the story of the day. That might work here yeah. in New Zealand. But it's, the interesting thing is, if you go right back to the old home show, um, they would have celebrities on. Absolutely. You know, I mean, that was part of the mix, and, and that's why the mix on close-up has gone so awry over the last three or four years. Um, you know, yeah. they'd lost that kind of interesting yeah. stuff that could attract a wide audience of viewers. The and the perfect mix was that big hit interview at the top, yeah. often yes. with a set-up piece, and you go, whoa, did you see that? That was a good interview. Ending on something light and fluffy, you know, I'll never forget Paul Holmes kissing Dame Kurita Kanawa. I yes. mean, that was yeah. a sort of mix. She's kind of getting off stage. Absolutely. Absolutely. Playing the trombone with Jeffrey Palmer <laughs> walking around. <Palmer>. Absolutely. <laughs> Beautiful moments. You could, your current affairs can actually be that kind of magazine mix and it can work. Yeah, you know, absolutely. What I'm worried about with this new show is that it'll become so light and so tasteless it's just um, chewing mm. gum for the eyes. What we do know is that both networks won't have much of a Christmas break. Well, they'll be working hard at getting yeah. their first shows in place. Uh, let's also look at another uh, scenario this week, and this is the issue of Wallace Chat who's the host of uh, Backbenchers, who fronted uh, in an interview style an advertorial that played on TVNZ's website. Let's have a look at it. Hi, I'm Wallace Chapman, and I'm looking at companies that are going above and beyond to practice better business. I found out about Cadbury and Fair Trade, and I'm sure you've seen the logo, but what does it actually mean? It means a better deal for farmers in developing countries, and it makes a real difference to people's lives. Welcome to Ghana. And did you know that Cadbury is responsible for more than 80% of Fair Trade chocolate sales in New Zealand? I'm sure you've seen the logo. Well, this triggered a few issues. Bill, tell mm. us what you made of it. Well, <laughs> Placing an advertorial in the middle of your news bulletin that uses a guy who presents a current affairs show um, is a really dangerous thing to do for the credibility of your news programme. All that is trying to do for Cadbury's is trade off the credibility mm. of news and current affairs. Uh, uh, yes, I want to just have a look at the graphic here that we see here um, from TVNC. This was their response. Ms Richards, uh, Richards said boundaries were changing between advertising and editorial. Uh, this is a lot of interesting uh, television around and the distinctions are changing all the time between what is editorial. Absolute oh. crap. Yeah. The, the <laughs> distinctions are not changing. They're as clear as they were when yep. I started my career. Yes, I understand they need to get advertorials mm. and, and revenue in, but editorial is editorial and advertorial is something quite different. And look, on radio, I read ads, but they're in ad breaks. It is very clear what is it, what is paid for and what is editorial. And those lines mm. must not change. One of the make big mistakes I made, I think, um, when I was at Television New Zealand is I allowed a commercial from Hanover carrying Richard Long's, the ex-newsreader's voice, saying yes. Hanover is strong enough to you know, survive With all condition any conditions. All times, I think, yes. you know, that newsreader voice in the middle of the, of the news bulletin, I'm sure sucked a lot of people into Hanover, people who lost their money. And um, you know, that's, that was an appalling decision by me to even allow it in the first place. But that advertorial is an absolute disaster. And to say the boundaries are changing is nonsense. Yeah. I don't have a problem with them doing advertorials. They need to be marked clearly. And, and if they are, do turn up in a bulletin, they're in an ad break. Yeah. You know, they are treated differently. It's, it, that is just an absolute because nonsense. Because we've seen that this is not dissimilar to what we see in uh, magazines, don't we, where you start reading something and actually it does look mm. like it's an article. In and the then, top right-hand corner you yeah. see advertorial yeah. or something. Usually it's very small print. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Do you think that needs to be done in television too? Because with Wallace Chapman, I mean, well, he, I think he you've looks got to like clearly he's in the middle of a report. Well, I think you've got to clearly do anything if it's going anywhere near a news bulletin or a current affairs show.
know, you've got to clearly delineate it. Um, the hilarious thing is that, is that um, this ad series was devised by Tim Wilson, the former um, New, York New York correspondent, correspondent for TV and said, and a journalist. Uh, I mean, you know, ethics would dictate, I would have thought, for a journalist to actually notice straight away that there's a real problem with that format. And what does it do to uh, Wallace Chapman's credibility as well? Yeah. I mean, he's going he's to be... He's a lovely guy. He's Wallace. going to be hosting the show on Prime. I'm not sure how they feel about him, you know, popping up on the TVNZ mm. website. And what it does for his credibility. It's on air. Yeah, and not here. And yeah. not here. though, will be quite chuffed, I imagine. <laughs> oh, well, we're talking about it. <laughs> yes, and not absolutely. Well, so. <laughs> All right, thank you to you both. Susan Wood and Bill Ralston, appreciate your time.